Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be giving some thrifted candlesticks an ornate makeover. I thrifted these candlesticks quite some time ago, so they've been sitting in my stash just waiting for the right inspiration and products to use on them. I'm going for a French, almost Gustavian finish on these, and I'm going to be using redesign molds. The first mold I'm using is redesign Salon de Glace mold. This is from one of their recent releases. I'm going to dust two of the designs with cornstarch, and then I'm going to start working my air dry clay into my molds there. The cornstarch is going to make it a lot easier to be able to get my castings out. So you can see I'm just pushing out that excess clay. And then when I'm happy with that, I will flex the mold and then flip it over and gravity is going to help me get my castings out. I envisioned that this piece would go down the bottom and that I would then cast the mirror image design that's on that same mold that will go opposite on the candlestick. Once I have my other casting ready, I am adding Sealy's Quick Set Wood Glue to the back of my clay castings and I'm going to start adding them to the candle base. Clay is wonderful to work with because you are able to bend it and manipulate it in any way that you want and dust air dry clay I find doesn't have any cracking as it dries so it's definitely a great product to work with. So I'm just going to manipulate those castings until they're sitting the way that I want and then you can see I've already cast two more of each of those and I'm going to be adding those to the opposite side of the candlestick. Once I have those secured in place, I took out Redesign's Sorrento Laurels Mold. I'm dusting the design there on the left with cornstarch and then rolling my air dry clay out and then I'm going to start working it into the design. Up the top there, you'll notice that there are quite a few intricate sections and I do get a little bit of breakage sometimes when I'm doing this, but it is very easy to glue those pieces back together. So it's not something that I'm too worried about. Once I have that mold filled, I'm going to flex the design and then just like before, I'm going to turn it over and the gravity is going to help the mold release. I'm then going to flip my casting over and add some wood glue to the back. You can see that I do already have a little bit of breakage happening, but as I said, that's okay. We can glue these things back into place. I'm going to position my casting on the center part of the candlestick. I'm envisioning this particular section to be the front part. So as you can see, I'm just repositioning some of the pieces that broke off and making sure that I have them glued in place. I'm then gonna take out Redesign Salon de Glace mold again and I am going to do a partial casting. You can see where I've dusted my mold with cornstarch. That's the area that I'm going to work my clay into. Once I have my casting out of the mold, I'm going to add some glue directly to the surface of the candlestick. This is a rounded section here, so it is a lot easier for me to add glue to the surface. I'm going to position that partial casting from the Salon de Glace mold, and you can see that I'm really bending this. I'm really manipulating the way that it looks until I'm happy with it. I did have a little bit of breakage again, but I was able to glue that back in place. Next, I'm going to take out that Sorrento Laurels mold again, and I'm just going to cast the little flower there. I just want that detail, and I'm going to glue that on top of the partial casting we did of the Salon de Glace mold. Next, I'm going to be using a different part of the Sorrento Laurels mold. I'm just dusting that small section there with cornstarch, and then I'm going to do a partial casting. I will then add some glue to the back and I'm going to position this underneath the section that we just glued on. Next, I'm going to do the exact same partial casting that I did on the Salon de Glace mold. 
and just repeating those same steps, working the clay into the areas. And I am going to be adding this to the opposite side where we already have this casting, if that makes sense. And I am going to be using my Sealy's Quick Set wood glue. Again, I'm adding that to the rounded surface of the candlestick as opposed to the mold itself. And then I'm going to position my casting on there. Now, I definitely adjusted this one quite a bit because it's not going to fit so I did end up pulling off as you can see on the left hand side there there are some pieces that I've already pulled off it's a little bit shorter but I'm going to save those and use them in another spot before that though I'm going to cast that little flower like we did on the opposite side and I'm going to glue that in the same place I then took the two little pieces that I pulled off my casting and I'm going to glue those in between each of the longer Sorrento laurel designs that we added to the front section. As you can see there, I'm just pressing down and making sure that's secure. As I was working on my design, I definitely had to keep in mind that I had to have the opposite side similar so that it was a balanced design. Next, I'm going to take out Redesign's floral chain mold. I'm going to do a partial casting of the design on the left there. And again, this is quite a fiddly piece. You could use a plastic card to help get a smooth edge if you're having any trouble. And once I have taken that out, I'm going to add some glue to the back of it. And this particular design is going to go up the top of our candlestick. I then did another partial casting. This time I had three of the loops and I am going to be adding that to the other side of the top of the candlestick to finish off that design. Obviously, whatever I'm doing on this candlestick, I am going to be doing on the other one that matches this because I do want two matching candlesticks. Once I'd finished gluing down all my castings, I did let these dry overnight. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going for quite an old world look, so I need to add some age. I'm going to take out Paint Couture's embossing medium. I'm going to take some of that out and put it in a plastic container. I'm then going to take out Paint Couture's crust medium, and I'm going to put the same equal amount of product in that container. And then I used Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze to tint it. This is going to help create texture on our candlesticks. As I said, they have been drying overnight, so they are set really well. I don't have to worry about them breaking off. Once I have my mixture ready, I'm going to start applying it over the entire candlestick. And you can see I am dabbing and stippling that product on over everything. I want this to look aged and weathered and like perhaps it's had many layers of paint over the years. And this texture is definitely going to help achieve this. Now I did tint it because at this stage, I was wondering if maybe I was going to be doing some wiping back to reveal that color underneath. So I did that just as a sort of precaution in case I went down that road. Once I'd finished adding the medium to both my candlesticks and they were completely dry, I took out Paint Couture's Opal Green Chalk Paint. This is a beautiful greeny blue tone. I have not used this before, so I was very excited to be using it on this project. I definitely wanted to try some different things in today's video. So I'm going to add that beautiful opal green to the entire candlestick and I'm doing a dabbing and stippling motion, really working it into all of the details of those beautiful castings that we added. But doing this motion is also obviously going to add to that texture. I did one full coat on each of the candlesticks and then I went back and did touch up in a few little areas that I had missed. When the opal green was completely dry, I then took out Paint Couture's Cozy Beige Chalk Paint and I'm going to be going over the top of each of our castings and I am dabbing that paint on. I'm not going for full coverage here. I don't mind if it looks like that paint has worn away over time. We're going to be doing some layering over the top so we're not going for perfection. So I'm going to continue adding that lovely cozy beige over all of the details and I did only do one coat of this particular color. Thank you. 
as I was working on these candlesticks, I found it really interesting that at each of the different steps, I actually quite liked how it looked. So if any point during this video, you feel that you would like it at that point and you don't like perhaps what I go on and add to it, each of these looks really can stand on their own. That's what I really liked about this process is I could see the different color combinations and see what worked and what didn't. But I actually really like this combination of that greeny blue with the cozy beige, that two-toned look. I feel like it definitely looks quite French and really effective actually, really quite provincial looking. So here's how it's looking at this stage. As I said, you could probably leave it here. This is quite a, a lovely fun look as is, but I like an older world look. So I'm going to take out Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to go over the top of the entire candlestick. At this point, I was thinking that perhaps I wanted those castings to look a little bit more like a wood tone. And this is definitely something that Van Dyke Brown Glaze can achieve. So I'm going to add it over the top of each of the castings and all over the paint. And then I will be pulling back some of that product. I don't have a sealer down because I'm working on such a small surface area. I'm not worried about it sinking in before I have an opportunity to wipe it back. Once I had most of the top section covered in the glaze, I grabbed a wet wipe and you can see I am dabbing and pulling off that excess glaze, but allowing it to really sit down into the details and also catch on that texture that we created in the other areas. If I feel that the glaze is a little bit too heavy in some areas, I am able to use my mister. I can mist that product because it's water-based and I can help that glaze move a little bit better. So I'm gonna to continue to add that glaze on the rest of the candlestick, really working it into all of the details. As I said before, there were different stages while doing this project where I thought I actually quite like how it looks right now. So this is that point. I really quite liked how it looked with the glaze over the top of the castings and it also deepened that opal green color. So you could definitely leave it here if perhaps this was a look that you liked. When the glaze was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to go over the top of all of the areas that we added that cozy beige and also obviously the glaze and I'm going to start adding that beautiful metallic. Now, I'm not going for full coverage here. I want this to look like old gilding that's worn away over time so I don't need it to be perfect. So I am going to go around and add that beautiful bronze to all of those castings. And remember, with these metallics, they do get brighter and more more vibrant once they are dry. I went with bronze for this, but if this isn't to your style, you could perhaps come in with a silver luxe metallic by Paint Couture, a copper, maybe you're a bit more of a bright gold person, gold mine might be a better option for you. I just really love bronze to me. It's a very classic look. If I inspire you to try any of these Paint Couture products, I would really appreciate it if you would use my affiliate link. I will put it in the description and on the screen. I just get a little thank you from Paint Couture in return. Once I finished adding the bronze to my castings, I then decided to add it to the rounded raised details that you can see in the section there that I'm painting. They kind of get lost a little bit once I've got the paint and the glaze on there. So I'm really going to highlight those and also another two of the raised borders around the top sections.
Again, you could leave the project at this stage. I actually felt this looked really great. I was definitely happy with it, but it didn't look as old world and weathered as I wanted. So I did decide that once this bronze was completely dry, that I would take out Paint Couture's buttercream chalk paint. And I added some to a plastic container and watered it down to create a paint wash. And then I started adding it over the top of my candlestick. I brushed the mixture on and then I took out my mister and really hit it with that water. And you can see I'm almost directing it down with the way that I'm directing the water down and I'm letting it trickle down, dribble down into all of the details. I don't want this to be opaque. I want there to be hints of this, almost like a whitewash. I kept adding water and watering it down and then I took out a paper towel and started dabbing back that paint wash. So I'm really wanting it to sit into the details. I want it to catch some of the texture. I want it to tone the paint just a little and this will be something that you will do to your liking. You could even leave this step out if you felt like it was a little bit too much or you could use a wax instead if this was perhaps a little bit too intense. So I'm going to continue to add the paint wash mixture in those different areas. I then use my mister to help it move and water it down further. And then I do come in with a wet wipe and a paper towel to dab back the excess to my liking. Once I had repeated the same process on the other candlestick, I did decide to take out my bronze Lux metallic and I'm going over the top of my dry paint there. I just want to bring out that luster again. It did get quite hidden by the paint, which is fine and you could definitely leave this step out, but I just wanted a little bit more shine, just a bit more. So I'm gonna go around and add a little bit more of that bronze over the top of the details. And here are our finished ornate candlesticks. I love how these turned out. Those redesigned molds are absolutely gorgeous and I really feel like that bronze Lux metallic brought this piece to life. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.